So, back to moto vlogging. This isn't quite on the heels of the last video, but uh, the last video I was going into drill, and this, this video is uh, uh, the ride home. And this is an awesome little bump right here. Yeah! So, um, yeah, I wanted to do a, a video on um, uh, the things you need to know about as a motorcycle rider that, uh, uh, yeah, you just need to know if, like, if you ever get pulled over for speeding and stuff. Now, you got to understand that as a motorcycle rider, uh, this first one is semi-irrelevant. Because if you're going balls the walls, I mean, it's not really necessary for the cop to do. Because it's an instantaneous uh, recognition. So, without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and get into the first thing you need to know. Um, police officers... Uh, are required to uh, form a tracking history and uh, well I should I should say at least uh, through the training that I received to get my radar and lidar certification you are required to have a tracking history and there are a few things that are involved with that um, first you need to uh, well as the police officer needs to do um, identify a possible speeder um, then what you need to do is make an estimation uh, of that speed of that vehicle. And typically you want it to be within three miles an hour. So you've got a plus or minus three. So say I go up to that black passenger car right there and I would say he's doing about 36. That would cover me from 33 to 39. And you have to be within that range. Uh, second off, um, you need to, and this is all before taking the reading off of the radar unit. Okay, so you've got the speed estimation, then you need to um, take a look at the, the vehicles or surroundings of that vehicle and see if your estimation makes sense. So as a motorcycle rider, if you're speeding or you're suspected of speeding and you're weaving in and out of traffic and blowing by traffic I mean recognition goes out the window you notice that right off the bat so I wouldn't suggest using this as a line of questioning to a police officer if you're doing that uh, and then finally once you've done that step that's when you can uh, confirm either visually or audio, uh, what that vehicle speed is. Um, so that's the tracking history. And that's, that's the most simple out of all of them. Um, second one I would ask about is uh, batching effect. The batching effect gets quite technical, but I'll, I'll try and keep it not so technical. So imagine that this black passenger car uh, was a police officer and he had rear mounted radar uh, most police you know cruisers have forward and rear mounted uh, radar so say he was running rear mounted radar uh, on me if I've got a semi behind me those radar signals are going to hit my motorcycle and reflect back but also because of the small profile of a motorcycle, the radar signals are gonna go past that vehicle and bounce off of the semi and then return past my motorcycle and go to that radar unit. That's why they call it the batching effect because you can batch two vehicles together into one reading. And that reading will be, uh, well, it can be a multitude of different things uh, but regardless to say, it's going to be wrong. So you need to ask the police officer uh, how he mitigated the batching effect. Now, the reason that doesn't work with a car is the simple reason that a car has a much larger uh, front profile. Like if you imagine that that green passenger vehicle was running rear radar on this black Honda, then those radar signals are not going to reach me. You 
see what I'm saying? The angle of that uh, passenger vehicle is going to prevent uh, my vehicle being picked up. So that's the batching effect. And third, this is a situational one. You're going to have to understand where that police officer was when he shot radar, which can be kind of tricky. Uh, but it, it's called the cosine effect. And no, it's not going to be all math oriented and there's not going to be any assignments and shit like that. So you don't really need to worry about that. But um, so the, the cosine effect occurs um, for this reason. Uh, a police cruiser can shoot radar straight forward or straight back. Uh, and if they have side-mounted radar, which I've never, ever, ever seen, they can run uh, the off to the left and off to the right. But like I said, I've never seen that. Usually it's just straight forward and straight back. So, you could imagine that there might be a little bit of trouble if, um, if he's running straight forward and the vehicle is off over here at an angle. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not full single signal strength. You know, it's full signal strength when it's going straight forward. It's not full single strength when it's off at an angle. So, right at the moment, I'm not 100% on what actually occurs with the radar waves that creates this effect. Um, you know, if if because of its angle, it's only receiving so much a portion of it, you know, that kind of technical thing. So I'm not going to get into that. But needless to say, it, the further the angle out, uh, the lower your speed is going to read, which is why they're still able to do it. So if you're traveling at 110 miles an hour and you're at a 20-degree angle, you're going to come up, say, like 80, 90 degrees. You know, that's completely not accurate, but it's a, it's a good approximation of what might be there so there's another situation where you know you got to have some context before asking the patrol officer this um you know if, if you are going 110 down a road and he shoots you at an angle i wouldn't ask him about the cosine effect because you're probably gonna still gonna read as a speeder um so yeah and i like I want, I don't want you guys to like get all, you know, intelligent on this patrol officer because that's not going to come across right. Uh, you're going to want to be stern, but not belligerent or smart ass. You know what I mean? That's not how you get a police officer to do what you want. And yes, it can be done. Um, so when he pulls you over, you know, do, do the complete cooperating thing, um, you know, Give him the information that he's requesting. Let him go run his thing. Uh, don't really say anything until he comes back with a ticket. If he does come back with a ticket, um, then you might want to bring some things up to him. But you don't want to mention it before then because uh, if he, if you mention it before then and he doesn't, wasn't going to come back with a ticket, well then you may have just talked yourself into a ticket. <laughs> and that's the last thing you want to do. So, uh, when he does come back with a ticket, then, you know, just politely say, Sir, I would like to ask you a few questions. Um, uh, I'd like to ask you uh, how you established your tracking history. And I would like to ask you how you uh, mitigated the batching effect and how you mitigated uh, the cosine effect, if applicable. Um, and like I said, be completely cool about it. Most, and this can be dependent on where you are and what you were doing, but most police officers are not looking to be in a bad situation, you know. Not all police officers want to talk you into doing something stupid. Um, if they're investigating you for something, then yeah, they might. But if it's something simple like speeding, they don't really care. 
they're just there to do what they need to do, write you a ticket, give you a warning, whatever the fuck, and move on. So, that's that. Um, let's see, what else can I say about that stuff? Um, nah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, when you're, when, yeah, well, when you're asking the questions, what, what you want to do is, you want to be running through your mind what actually just happened, and see if he's trying to bullshit you at all. If he's bullshitting you, you need to politely tell him, sir, that cannot be true. That cannot be true. And then support it. Again, don't be a you know, a dickhead about it, but support it. You know, if, if you ask him about the cosine effect, and he said, well, the angle wasn't great enough, tell him, sir, that, that's completely false. Any angle will give uh, a radar counting unit um, the cosine effect. And I want to know how you mitigated the, that. So if you're, if you're going down the road at, say, like, 45 in a 30, and he hits you at like say uh, a 30 degree angle you're probably going to come up as 36 37 somewhere in there and that that's still speeding but usually acceptable to police officers so if he comes up with a ticket for like 40 something uh i would i would want to ask him how he mitigated the the cosine effect and if he said well that angle isn't enough to cause any type of whatever to happen in the radar, then, then correct him and say, no, it, it will. And I, and tell him that I, I know the speed that you're, you're writing down is not correct. So, and you know, most times they, they might still, um, uh, you know, give, issue you the ticket, which, you know, I wouldn't really make too big of a deal out of it. I would, I would go to court on it, and I would, I would make sure that that police officer was there for um, the court hearing, and I would make sure that whoever is defending you, you or a lawyer or something else, um, reminds the police officer that you would discuss that um, and do it in front of the judge. Um, I don't see why a police officer would would lie and say no we never discussed that so as long as you can show to the judge that you've discussed it with the police officer then he has reason to go well okay um maybe i should look into what actually happens in this cosine effect and see if it's applicable you might get out of the ticket you know especially with the batching effect because there really is no way to mitigate the batching effect the only way to mitigate the batching effect is for you to turn lanes to where uh, there isn't a vehicle behind you or in front of you, or the police officer to get in between the two objects, or to use the cosine effect. I mean, that's the only way to get out of uh, uh, the batching error. So, you know, those are some tips, some hints. I suggest you all uh, look into them. Uh, make sure I'm not giving you bunk information. Um, I'm not, but, you know, just a heads up to do your own research. So, I don't really know if I've hit my time, but I've hit the end of this topic, so uh, that'll probably be it for this vid. See y'all later.